Enersys, powerful solutions for a world that never stops. All right, we're going to cover uh, battery chargers for a little bit here. Been a lot of uh, changes in the battery charger world in the last five to seven years. Uh, a lot of changes in the last two years. Uh, and I just want to kind of go back through battery chargers, kind of where we came from and where we are today. So this is kind of a quick slip of uh, what chargers are, uh, are doing today versus what they did. When we think of chargers, you kind of, kind of wonder a little bit about them. Uh, you have to understand that a charger is bought usually every 10 years, so it's about two uh, battery lifetimes. Uh, they're the least expensive part of the package. The lift truck, the driver, and the, uh, the battery itself obviously cost more than a charger. Uh, the charger determines the battery and hence the truck performance. We all know that our telephone or our car or anything that has a battery in it needs a charger. Same thing with your lift truck, you got to have a decent charger. So in other words, a $2,500 charger determines the worth of four to six batteries, and I'm talking a five-year lifetime of a truck lease or a truck package. Uh, batteries worth $28,000 to $38,000, and the truck and battery performance. In the world of a five-year package for a lift truck owner, that's about a $300,000 package total. So a $2,500 charger determines the worth value and working functionality of about $300,000 worth of input, truck battery charger, and all the work done in five years. Technology has changed a lot, and this is kind of what we're talking about here a little bit. We started back uh, in the early 60s and 70s with ferro resonant equipment. It was low cost. There's very few people building ferro resonant equipment anymore today. Uh, it was uncontrolled. It's basically like the charger you have in your garage that you plug into your car battery. It turns on charges the battery with no respect to the battery and turns back off again. Just about obsolete. Very, very few uh, ferro resonant chargers around today. Silicone controlled rectifier, SCR chargers came out next. They were controlled. They had a lot more components, uh, pretty durable, but they could kind of look at the battery and charge the battery for what it was. Uh, a silicone controlled rectifier charger was the first charger that the industry built that didn't just charge the battery no matter what the battery's age, temperature, or problems were. It kind of looked at it. It had fixed rates for 36 volt, 48, whatever, but it did not uh, allow the battery to get overheated and it wouldn't overcharge the batteries. They're almost obsolete. There are still some manufacturers building SCR chargers, uh, but they're fast leaving. High frequency, HF. Uh, there are two technical words, IGBT and MOSFET which these two chargers that you'll see in most of the booths here today actually are running off from. Now, high frequency really means we took 60 cycle power, which is how we ran chargers for years, right out of the wall, and we pumped that message up to 24,000 cycles, and we come out with a lot cleaner DC. So now we have a charger which is very efficient. We go from 60 to 70% efficiency to 96% efficient. That's... Uh, well, we'll have a slide here in a minute. That's a lot of savings a year just in your electric bill. Um, the, the big thing about it, they've gotten very small, and they've be able to charge the battery much quicker. And everybody's about getting their lift truck back as quick as possible. The latest technology, obviously, is modular. And if you look on the other side of our booth here, you'll see the line of impact chargers, modular. Uh, modular chargers, we, the big advantage there is we went from 150 components in a standard charger down to 11. So in a charger today, we have about 11 components, and that's just, you know, monstrous when you talk about maintenance. Uh, the efficiency is about the same as high frequency. Also, those chargers that are built today have enhanced data, so we can gather information of what's happening with the battery, what's happening with the, actually the truck, and what the charger is doing and how it's feeding us back. We're going to talk about those things on that charger. We're talking about modular, high frequency, chargers built today. And I'm just going to show you some slides that kind of compare it. The Faro charger was about $790 to run a Faro charger for one year for one shift. That's what it cost. That was that efficiency. SCR, $759. Not much different. HF, $607. HF modular, $580. So that's one shift for one year. That's your electrical bill savings. So if you run a three-shift operation, you can see there's some 
pretty good savings. If you walk in a building now and you have a lot of the old style transformer chargers, you're going to be able to save two to three hundred dollars per charger just on your electric bill for every one of those chargers you replace with a high frequency modular unit. So big savings over the life of a charger, which we're expecting 10 years, it'll pay for that charger quite easily just in your electric bill. Data, uh, that's something we have now when we talk about data. There's so much information we can gather from the, from the charger. Uh, there is communication between the charger and the battery in many instances today, but we can look at how much the charger is running, how long the shifts are, how many amp hours, is the battery any good? Is the battery got a problem? All that information will show, show up right on the screen now of the chargers out front. And if you look at the little symbols of water, uh, overheating or cell balance, that's what those mean. They'll tell you if the battery's got a problem. They'll tell you if your customer's not watering the battery. They'll keep track of how much of the battery the customer's using. If he's turning it in or changing it too soon. If he's plugging it in when it shouldn't be plugged in. If he's unplugging it live, not turning the charger off, all that information is now gathered and stored to help the customer get the best life out of his battery. When you're spending $6,000 for a battery, the charger now can tell us if we're taking care of that battery well or not. And that information can be gleaned in about 17 different reports out of the charger we have now. Most of those reports aren't needed by everybody, but there's always something in there that a customer would like to see. Touchy, touchy. Multi-voltage, multi-amperage. The latest version of the, of the uh, impact charger now is uh, capable of charging any lift truck. Any voltage, 12, 24, 36, 48. So you're basically looking at a picture here. This charger today can address any lift truck you have with just one charger. So instead of having chargers for all the different products you have now, you can put in one charger and plug anything you want into it. The latest impact can do this without what they call a BDR, a block on the battery talking to it. That'll help us gather information, but the latest product we have does not need a block on the battery, a communication block, to talk back to the charger to tell it what it is. The latest charger can do this on its own. So now I can have a single charger sitting in the building. Anybody who's driving any kind of vehicle can pull up and charge it without any problem. Components, I mentioned this a little earlier, maintenance and repair is a big thing. Maintenance is pure cost at any customer. Uh, we've taken the charger from over 100 components easily in old technology down to 11 components. So basically you have a piece of equipment which is extremely easy to maintain. It also tells you what's wrong right on the display screen. So when you come up to the charger and there's an issue for a technician, he sees a fault code, he looks in the book, he replaces the component. That 11 components, by the way, includes like even the cabinet. So real-time uh, components that can fail, there are only six in this latest charger. So very, very easy to work with compared to old technology. Size, as you would see if you saw any of the chargers here in the last couple days, uh, is reduced immensely. Uh, the old transformer-based chargers, which we built for years, uh, they were probably 30 inches by 27 inches uh, in dimension. That was kind of an industry standard, what they call a K1 spec. Uh, today's charger, 18 and a half inches tall, 13 and a half inches wide, and basically we could almost stack three of them on top of each other in the same footprint, height-wise, as uh, the old, old piece. Uh, makes for a very, very slim, and I talked to a lot of distribution people, their warehousing area needed to, to stack chargers and to assemble a battery charging area is greatly reduced. With opportunity and fast charging coming in to big things in our industry, I now have a charger which weighs 84 pounds. I can hang it on a column, I can put it on the wall, I can put it almost anywhere. And in doing that, I have made a charger that's not easy, uh, not difficult to, to locate anywhere in the building for an opportunity or fast charge application. And that's the applications which most of us are, are working with today. Charging area. This kind of shows you what we do with space. This is what it used to look like. Anybody who's been in the industry has probably seen this picture many times. Big chargers, lots of room, batteries sitting. And when we narrow the footprint down, we can get the whole footprint down to almost one-third. And now the battery is driving the dimension of the footprint, not the charger as it was in the past. So you look at this new room, you can see how much smaller the charger are 
Yeah, the one old charger sitting here, you can see the difference between the new chargers on the top and the, the batteries in that racking system. Now this would be a swap out, and obviously this is a guy who's changing batteries. Uh, that's going away. 60% uh, of what we do today is, is either opportunity or fast. So we kind of flip that thing to, or we just charge the trucks during breaks and keep going. These chargers, these impact modular high frequency chargers can be swap, opportunity or fast same charger we can do all types of profiles so if we can go to swap or fast or opportunity we allow ourselves to get rid of the battery room completely so the new chargers now basically you're seeing here is a row of chargers and at the end of a shift or at the, at, during a break or lunch everybody backing their trucks in and just just filling the truck up just like charging or filling your car up on a trip you travel for a ways you fill it you top the gas tank off and that's what we're doing now these chargers are all programmed to talk to the truck to know exactly what's going on and they'll put back what they need to put back and with the right charging profiles which we would develop for the customer we can match it up so that charger that truck will run up to three full shifts with just one charger and one battery cost savings and that profile and that type of an idea I want to go through that because there's so much of it here at the show so much of it happening today so when you look at faster opportunity, we're really looking at some real savings. No battery handling equipment. Big investment. No labor for changing. Uh, been in the business a long time. A lot of the bigger plants had battery changing personnel. We don't have to have any of that. Even if you had battery uh, dry truck drivers changing their own batteries, there was always that downtime or that probable of uh, an injury. Reduced labor for maintenance. Because the battery isn't coming in and out of the truck, very seldom do you have damage. Increased productivity. Truck doesn't have to stop to change batteries every shift. So you, all that time is plugged back into productivity. Floor space, no more handling equipment, no more battery room, no more what you saw in the other pictures where everything's stacked on a rack. Reduced lift truck maintenance. Uh, when the voltage is higher on the lift truck, the truck likes that. It runs better. When batteries got very discharged, it was hard on truck components. As the voltage goes down, the current goes up, that's heat, and component wear increased. With fast charge, you always have a fast char full charge battery. So your lift truck is very treated very well by the battery. And then operator safety. When operators don't have to change 3,000 pound batteries, people don't get injured. So just one injury a year in a big plant by not having to change batteries is, is a big savings, big savings. And just a slide to kind of show you where our industry is going. And this is kind of really telling the story. This is right out of the records of charger sales for all manufacturers. And if you look at it from 2007 to 2015, you can see how the high frequency chargers were around 20% in 2007. And last year, 2016, it was over 80% high frequency opportunity and fast type application charging equipment. And where the other equipment that we've had for years is kind of dwindling and going away. So our industry has really shifted very quickly to high frequency chargers for their efficiency, for their size, easy of maintenance, and the ability to faster opportunity charge. It really makes it work well. Intersys obviously is building all this equipment themselves and have uh, since the beginning of high frequency chargers. And we build a product now that we sell all over the world in the same compatible cabinet and same configuration so it's very easiest for us to work with uh, no matter where your customer shipping the equipment so you can see there's a real trend towards that type of equipment all around that charger actually costs you considerably less than the old chargers we used to sell so when you walk in a customer's building today and you see the big steel chargers full with transformers in them it just makes sense to sell the guy a, a high frequency charger if nothing else just the cost savings of the electric bill They'll pay for that charger in his life. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much.